the box seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Box seat time again, Michael Gearin's with us. He's been across the Tasman at the Miracle Mile. It's always one of the great races, Michael, and it didn't let us down this year. Gregory, hello to you and a big hi to all our friends uh, watching around New Zealand or in Australia. I had a good time, Greg. I went to the Miracle Mile, it was fun, and when I go to big race meetings of either code, you want the best horse to win. You want to leave thinking, gee, I saw a really good horse tonight, maybe a champion once in a while. I saw one of those, and leap to fame, and I think I saw another really good horse in Call Me The Breeze, and I also saw a few different parts to this Champions Night coming up at Cambridge, because Merlin gave me his best performance of his career too, Gregory. I thought it was a fantastic night. There was a little moment, Gregory, a little moment, at the 150, where I thought sooner the better was to become one of the more unlikely Miracle Mile champions of all time, but so much happened, and now there's so many questions, so let's try and answer some of them. Yeah, let's get right into it, Michael. What can you expect on your box seat today? Yes, the champ, uh, Leap to Fame, did take out the Miracle Mile, the Million Dollar Race. Uh, the Purden at Feelin team will talk to Scott about how they went across there and where they go now. Can goes back. He got the job done in the Lincoln Farm Founders. Manangle Rap will cover the Derby, cover the... Uh, the Hammerhead and a few other races. Preview some from New Zealand. Sam Otley got another Pfeiffer and we had a first time winner. So a lot to get through on your box seat. Let's go back to it though. It's with Garrard's. Garrard sponsored the 2024 Miracle Mile. Here it is, Michael. We're going to watch the entire race. Hi, my name is Jeff. This was the sensation at the start. He looked like he was going to cross and cross comfortably. Speak the truth was to his inside. Then he got a bit wobbly. He did, and look, I'm not sure he was going to cross as easily as many people thought. Speak the truth's quite a big horse, and he pushed up inside him enough that he was going to need to get two lengths across him, which he, I'm not sure he was going to do. He did the same thing last week in the heat. He, he got a little bit fiery, and I suppose if you fire them off the gate, as you have to at Menangle all the time, some horses aren't always going to come back to you. While all of that was going on, Grant Dixon ended up where we all thought he was going to end up, with Leap to Fame, sitting parked. And Greg, when he sat parked over the biggest races in his career, he's been beaten. So this was the chance to reverse that and prove himself a true champ. Leader is a good horse who won the week before in 148. Uh, in the trail, Spirit of St. Louis, he's very disappointing. Loyalist outclassed in the 1-1, one, one, and sooner the better. Three back on the inside, great drive by Gavin Fitzpatrick. Shortly, he'll get the run he needs. Further back, we see Mark Purden on Don't Stop Dreaming. Mark said to me afterwards, look, I made a blue. I should have gone to the rail earlier. Don't think it would have mattered, but he could have potentially got the run Gavin did. There is Leap to Fame going up to speak the truth, and here comes Sooner the Better. And here is the voice of the Miracle Mile, Freddie Hastings. Better, sidling up alongside Frankie Ferocious into the clear from Spirit of St. Louis. Leap to Fame needs to fight. He leads again. Leap to Fame. This could be a historic victory. This standard bred superstar. What a win. Too good. Leap to Fame. He was just about down and out when sooner the better got on terms, but he has fought back and a historic win in the big one. You're taking in what it's like to win a Miracle Mile. Do tell us. Yeah, I was, I was, oh, honestly, I was just so wrapped for the horse, you know, he just he had to do it tough and um, he could feel on the other horse levelled up close to him, but he, he just put his head down and just wanted to get to that line. I was so, so proud of him. He's really got it all and things change very drastically at the start and he's just able to get into the spot that you needed to. Yeah, once, yeah, hi, my name's Jeff Gallop. It really did, like you say, change the complexion of the race and... I was able to get across by the first tour, and Robbie's been pepping me up all week with pep talks, what they had to do. So, yeah, we thought we had to be, you know, down in the two wide line by the by the corner. We were able to get there, so I was sort of comfortable off then, but it was a long straight, that's for sure. What were you feeling at the top of the straight? Because sooner the better got to you quickly, but that probably suited your guy. He loves a fight. 
Yeah, he did. I, like, I thought I'd happy half around the corner, but I knew the one that was smoking on my back was feeling all right too. So I thought I got, I'd had to uh, speak the truth, but I was worried about the one on my back. This horse has been a real life changer for yourself and Trista, and I saw the boys here tonight as well. What does he mean to you? Oh, it's just, I just, it's been the best part of my career, and obviously Trista's been the best part of my life, and, and to have them all here tonight, just, yeah, just super. He's now won the big three. Are Kevin and Kay here tonight? Yeah, there they are, and a lot of the family's here too, and um, yeah, it's great to see them all there and come and, and really um, appreciate this horse and celebrate him. It was a home crowd for the Inter-Dominion. The New South Wales crowd loved him too. Did you hear the roar? Yeah, I think a lot of people just, you know, just really love the horse. And, um, yeah, it's great that, you know, just different people come and want to get photos with him and stuff. It's, yeah, it's just really great to be part of, part of him, that's for sure. Enjoy this, Grant. Thank you. Yeah, 11 straight, Michael, and he did it the tradesman's way. It's not easy to do at Manangle, let alone in a miracle mile. Let's hear from Scott Phelan, who, alongside Barry Purden, trained the runner-up in Sooner the Better. Scott, mission accomplished, getting Sooner the Better into the miracle mile. I guess that was a big tick in the right box, but he's raced enormously and gone very close. Yeah, no, it was. It was just... A privilege really to be in the race and um you know for the whole night and um and what it was so um yeah from the run second you know he definitely exceeded our expectations that's for sure scott when the barrier draw came out it, it looked pretty logical that gavin would go to the to the market pegs and, and get himself into a not nice position and and particularly at this level with this horse that's what he loves yeah exactly you know and i think the market pegs around the angles sort of pretty important you know in those big races so um you know gav drove him a treat and um emma will say she done her part picking the barrier but um yeah like it all helped look you you raced up alongside what i think it's fair to say now as a champion he, he a champion to me is a horse that basically is unbeatable and leap to fame is that and he looked like he was going to go past him but the great uh, qualities that leap to fame has fought him off but oh your guy's gone enormous yeah, no, exactly. Like, he, he really ranged up to him. But, um, you know, as, as you say, all the champions always find a bit extra. You can always get up to them, but you can never quite get past them. So, um, you know, there's no shame in that. And, um, you know, he certainly did the stable proud. Yeah, absolutely. And he went over there, hasn't won a race, but he won a couple of hundred thousand. Um, that's that's a heck of a tick uh, in, in the right box, isn't it? Yeah, yeah not wrong. Yeah, certainly pay for the trip, that's for sure. But, um Every dollar he gets, he, he certainly deserves because he uh, he never shies away from the challenge, that's for sure. Yeah, but to unpack there, Michael, well, let's start with Leap to Fame and where he sits in the annals of uh, of the harness racing history. And We're not trying to compare him to other horses, but I think he deserves that champion status now because I do believe, at the moment, he is unbeatable. Well, he's the champion of this crop. Yep. Absolutely he is because he's just better than these horses who admittedly aren't that good. Like if you talk the four next best horses in Australasia, or let's make it six if you want, from what you thought were the best horses a year ago, most of them aren't racing. Copy, that's not racing. Self-assured is getting older, a lot older. Uh, Catch a Wave has had an incident. Captain Ravishing's disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, a lot of the Emma Stewart horses aren't around. They seem to have just gone missing. So he's beating sooner the better, who's a really brave horse, and as we've mentioned so many times on the show, is going to be a proper grand circuit horse because he turns up for work every week. But you can't take away from him because he's not beating great horses because what else can you do? Look, Swayze wasn't there. There's another one who didn't turn up for the race. He's a wonderful horse and he's a brave horse and he's fast and he's got every quality you want apart from gait speed, which would make his life a lot easier but would also make our lives more boring. The big question mark now for most people, because you tend to watch a race, take a deep breath, and then think what's next, is will he come to the race by grins? Had a long conversation with Grant Dixon yesterday. Everybody thinks he was coming and they were as good as signed. But I think they're now thinking, because he was quite tired, well, when do we get a break? Because if we go to the race by grins, there's a little mini break in after that. And then there's a Queensland carnival, which some people would say, does that really matter? But when you live in Queensland, it makes total sense to go to it. Then you've got a New Zealand Cup. They're very keen on the New Zealand Cup. And Grant said, I, if I could only win one of those two races, I want to win the New Zealand Cup more than the race by grants. 
So there's a really good push for Addy. And then you've got an Inter-Dominion back at Sydney at the back end of the year, which we've proven, or he's proven, uh, he can he can win in saying that the Inter's different this year because it goes to Bathurst and Newcastle. So I, if he was my horse, I would bring him to the race by Grins because he's the stallion and eventually one or two big chunky New Zealand wins might get you 20 or 30 good New Zealand broodmares. You don't want the bad ones, you want the good ones. But I can also see how they're thinking, well, where do we get to rest this horse? So where, where percentage-wise do you think it sits, whether he comes or not? 50-50. I thought it was 90-10 last week. Mm. The, Kevin Seymour apparently is going to... They're going to tell Kevin what they think, which is 50-50, we're happy to go if you want to go. And then Kevin's going to tell them today. So this is today, Tuesday. Yep. So by the time people watch this, this decision may be made. It's really easy to say when you live in New Zealand, well, he should be coming. It's our race. He should be here. But you've got to do the best by the horse. The last thing I would say about it is... After doing this job for a long time, one thing I've learned is trainers say to him all the time, if I look after this horse now, he'll look after us down the road and, and all that sort of stuff. Heard it a few times. Yep. And not very often does it actually turn out the way you think it's going to because so many horses leave good wins on the table. Now, he's a very sound horse, but he is a colt. And when the colts hit the wall, when they say, I've had enough of this, they tend to hit it pretty hard. They don't come back. So, um, and we've seen that way back from Alva Colo and Uracles, and, and you've seen it from horses even like Lazarus. Sometimes we, when they're done, they're done. I would take him because I think that a New Zealand wind is crucial to him. You don't know if you'll have a horse by November, and he does seem very race and repeat, but Grant knows the horse obviously way better than anybody else on earth. So I'm thinking he's 50-50 at best, and that announcement, Greg, will change the race one way or the other because I think speak the truth who's never beaten him, and quite clearly at the moment can't beat him, might go to the Nullarbor in Perth if Leap to Fame comes. If Leap to Fame doesn't come, a slot comes open, maybe Speak the Truth goes into that slot. So I think there's a few people who are thinking what happens next with my horse. We know sooner the better is signed. Um, he's going to be there, which is now a very good signing because he's developed into a top open class horse. I thought Frankie Ferocious was good. Speak the Truth has emerged from this carnival. Was a Don't really good stop horse. dreaming. Don't stop dreaming. Spoke Pass to Mark. Mark. He, said, he said, look, I wanted to get him home. I want to get him home. He came home Sunday, and they, they want to, to set him for the race by Grins. I think they're happy enough to be home. It was a long summer for him. He raced at Alexandra Park on a horrible night in the rain on December the 31st. He had a delayed trip to Melbourne. He raced three weeks in a row through Melbourne and yep. Sydney. He's learned a whole new box of tricks and become a, a sub-150 horse Greg. He's the horse who will start favourite, I think, if Leap to Fame comes out mm. in the race by Grins pre-draw. So away from them, Frankie Ferocious is a pretty good horse. I'm, I'm Do you hearing, think he's a chance of coming? I'm hearing he's not coming. Okay. I'm hearing he's going to Queensland. But again, take Leap to Fame out. People start going, mm. oh, maybe I'll go. Um, I'm hearing he's going to have a little break and go to Queensland. Um, hi, my name is Jeff. Has proven that he's a Menangle Miler. That's yep. what he is. That's what he'll stick around. No different to Ultra Orlando or Cash and Flow and a whole bunch of other horses. But when people look back, and I know it's easy to say this afterwards, but I said it all last week to anybody who would listen. When people look back one day and look at Leap to Fame's record and go, he didn't start favourite in the Miracle Mile, and hi, my name is Jeff did. Yeah, they'll go to themselves. Who was high? My name is Jeff. <laughs> yeah, they will. That's yeah. what that, that's what all happened. It was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in harness racing because for a year, people have been telling us he might be the best horse in the world. And mm. I've still got no idea if he isn't. I don't know. But he always sits parked to win races and he was going to have to sit parked outside a largely inferior horse. He was only two horses that could lead the race. How he was out to $4.20 is as bizarre a dividend as I've ever seen for a major race I've been involved in. All right, we'll leave the Miracle Mile there, and if you did back him, nice work, because I doubt you're going to get that price again, not in the short, short term anyway. What about the price you got about this horse? It's Merlin, as he's known over there, in the hands of Mark Purden. What a performance from him, outside of the front row, 153.7 the mile rate, rock and roll dues to his inside, that's important for the race by Grins as well. Let's get Fred to bring him home, he gets there by the barest of margins, and then hear again from Scott Phelan about this nuggety little star. 
Cletus. It's Merlin. That's tough. That's big. That's a win. It's Merlin. Beach rock and roll, dude. Well, you'd be disappointed that Merlin didn't not only win, say, a Chariots of Fire, but also get into a Miracle Mile. But what a brave performance in the light horse from him. Uh, outside barrier, having to sit parked, 153 mile rate, got past Rock and Roll Do, who's no slouch. Um, what, what an incredible response from your horse. Yeah, look, it was, you know, you're from the draw, you know. Uh, look, we were confident in the horse, but um, to say we were really confident that he'd win, you know, we, we were a bit unsure, but uh, look, he was very courageous the other night. He, he got a reasonable drag into it, and from there, he um, he pretty much had to do it on his own. So, um, look, glowing reports from Mark when he came back in, and um, like Zach's done a great job up to then, but we just weren't sure with we were that big a winning chance the other night, you know, so... Um, yeah, look, it was just a great night and uh, it was a great win from him. Yeah, how cool to have M. Purden sitting in, in the bike and um, history books will show for many years for, for his late father and for Barry. He drove many, many winners, not so many in the last couple of decades, but to have him sitting in the sulky with Barry there was pretty special, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. It was, you know, having having Mark and Barry, two legends of the game there and, uh, you know, I just managed to fit in the photo next to them. So that was, that was a real, real good thrill too. What do you do with both these horses now? They're obviously both in the race by Grins. Uh, the city of Auckland Free For All comes up. Is that too soon? And you'll probably wait for Cambridge, the flying mile, the week before? Yeah, it's probably looking that way, Greg, to be honest. They'll probably have a few easy days now. And uh, and then we'll look to probably go to that flying mile um, the week before the Grins. So um, that's that looks like the pretty logical thing. So, um, but yeah, look, they've, they got home last night. Uh, they've done well and they look great since they've come home. So they look, don't look, they've taken too too many effects from the runs. So uh, we're really, really looking forward to what they can do in the in the next month or so. Yeah, win 16 for Merlin. How, how cool was that though, Michael? And when you think about the history, I remember tax credit he drove to beat Luxury Liner to win a New Zealand free-for-all. Obviously, uh, Mark Hanover he was associated with too, and, and a, a whole heap of other very good horses for uh, Roy and Barry. But um, really special moment, I'm sure it was, for the family there on Saturday night. Yeah, well, Mark Hanover would have been the biggest winner that Mark has driven for the family colours, although it was a slightly different version of the family colours. It was The spots seemed to have got bigger over the years. Um, but that was back in 1991. So you're right, tax credit. Um, that was one of Mark's first really big wins. He does have a great record as a freelance driver, Mark. He's won all sorts of weird races for all sorts of unusual people. But yeah, the family colours would have been a real buzz for him, I'm sure. That, that was the best performance I've seen from Merlin. Merlin's a horse who, while he's a really good horse, and he might end up being a top, top horse, Greg, he has invariably won the races I thought he should win. When he's run to the front in races, or he's been up against the marker pegs, he's been very good and, and usually won. Often not by a lot, but he's won. And when he's had to sit parked or come from back in the field, and there was a Harness Millions race where he did come from back in the field, but invariably he's got beat. So to go to Menangle and sit parked outside of former Victoria Cup winner and beat him is a pretty big performance. I, I think he's gone to a new level. I think... Both of their horses have got better over at Menangle, and I think they'll be better for it coming back because you learn some new tricks. Merlin can win the race by grins, but his odds for the race by grins, which have decreased enormously in the last 24 hours, he was $9. As we're recording this, he's five fifty. If, again, it's a big if, it's the story of the race at the moment. If Leap to Fame comes out, he'll be $3. Yeah. So... He's gone to the next level, and I think we've seen, with Self Assured getting older and with Copy that injured, I think we've seen the arrival of these two horses, Greg, as now the horses we talk about as New Zealand's best two horses, because obviously Akuta's sidelined as well. So at the moment, these two four-year-olds have turned up at the right time, and if Leap to Fame doesn't come, they could very quickly find themselves dominating the market for a race, Greg, which, if one of them draws the front line, might be theirs to lose because I didn't think Better Eclipse was good enough there. No, he wasn't. It, rock and Roll Do was good, but he yep. just lacks that, I think he lacks that high, high speed for Cambridge. And then unless somebody else is cunning enough to turn up with the right horse, the horse who should be coming to Cambridge, and they won't come because they never travel. And I've been asked this by about four people this week, yeah. is Ladies in Red. Hmm. Ladies we'll get, in Red would we'll draw barrier, barrier one. 
would draw barrier one, yep. would be close to favourite with no leap to fame. Mm. But they've been such a uh, reluctant team to travel in the past. I'm not sure how many people have tried to get them to come, but if Leap to Fame pulled out and she was sound and happy, Greg, that could be the ceiling of her career. Mm. But there's been no indications they've wanted to come in the past, so hence it makes it hard for people to negotiate with them. Yeah, and look, it just makes the intrigue leading into the decision this week in particular around Leap to Fame uh, all the more important. A horse that isn't in the field yet, but has been in the past. Kango went back to Alexandra Park. Only a small field, Michael, but uh, got the job done. We're going to hear from Anna Donnelly very shortly. David Butcher in front, home in very slick sectionals. It was win number 14 for him. Uh, he's gone past the $400,000 mark too. And Anna Donnelly had this to say about the big bloke back in winning form. Anna, congratulations, Friday night, the big boy's back. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, it was definitely a surprise. I didn't expect that from him first up, but, um, yeah, no, really good. Good to see him back. He'd had just one workout, I think, going into that race, so I know you were probably thinking at least that run and maybe one more to bring him on, but um, he just showed his class, really. Yeah, he did. He only had the, um, the one quiet trial, but David was quite happy with him. Um, but yeah, I sort of thought, oh, well, there's no one to trial with uh, the following week, so I thought we might as well go round. And only being 1700, I didn't think that was really going to be his go. But uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely was obviously. And um, yeah, he did. He, he really surprised us all. Uh, at home in 54.6, they don't go much quicker than that. What's the commodity you're dealing with now? Is this can go fully developed now, mentally and physically? Yeah, hopefully. I think um, he had a really good spell after Cup Week. Um, and I think that's just like, you know, it's just been so hard to get give him time off with all the racing. So uh, we opted just to tip him out. And he just, yeah, he really thrived on that. He looks great. He's holding his condition. Um, we probably worked him up a little different this time around as well. So maybe that's helped him a bit too. And, um, you know, yeah, just sort of, just good to, good to have him back and, and fresh and happy. All right, so this was obviously a stepping stone going to uh, the free-for-all Friday week's time. What beyond that had you planned? And as a result of Friday night, has anyone come knocking for that race by grins sort of thing, that million-dollar go-around? No, no, the phone's been pretty quiet, to be fair, Greg. Um, yeah, we were just going to take it race by race and see how he came back, you know. Um, he had a pretty hard season last season, and, um, you know, it was, yeah, I think just the... Just, we're just going to see how he was, really. And he um, obviously seems good and happy. So, yeah. All right. So he's come through it good. Um, that race will be on the radar. Hopefully he performs to his optimum again. And you can get him back in to the race by Grins. Is his campaign through to the Auckland Cup, is that as far as you've got? Yeah, that's as far as we've got. And then probably another wee break and, and then start the, you know, the New Zealand Cup plan again. I don't think we'll be going overseas anytime shortly. <laughs> No, well, you went down that path, you had a crack at it, he, he's come back and maybe maybe that's what's made him into the rounded horse that he is today, who knows, but um, we often know with those sort of trips that, that things can certainly uh, go that way. Hey, first of all, congratulations again, um, ma magnificent to have him back on the track, to have him winning, I know, I know what he means to you uh, and the whole stable, so um, really pleased for you there and, and looking forward to seeing what he can do in the next few weeks. Yeah, thanks for that, Greg, cheers. Yeah, great to catch up with Anna Donnelly. She's got a couple going around that I did ask her about, Michael. One being Jollymont. You wouldn't believe it. He's only won three races, Jollymont, and he's a rating 54. Gio takes a beating in about race three on Friday night. But uh, Kango, conditions suited him the other night, got away with it and sprinted home very quickly. Well, that, that's what he does. He, <clears throat> he wins those races just below the best races. And yep. it's a big step to win the best races because obviously the best horses are in them. And invariably when he's won a Kaikoura Cup, and I think he won a Franklin Cup on New Year's Eve one year, and, and um, he, he's won races like this before, he's got to the front. And David's tended to drive him very, very well. And because David's David, people don't want to attack him. Not, not that there was much room to attack there over the 1700, because he's broken so many eggs to make the omelette that is David Butcher, that people just think, well, I'm not going to attack David. It's just, it's a waste of time. And that gets you wins like this. He, he must go close to getting a run in the race by Grins, particularly if Leap to Fame pulls out, because there's not many other horses left you would put in the race. 
So we mentioned ladies in red, but I don't think she'll come. Uh, I'm not sure many of the other Australians, apart from Speak the Truth, will come. And then you look at the locals. Crandall Giddy's pretty keen to have a crack with the Republican Party, but he'll need to win a race or at least perform well in a race in the next couple of weeks. Old Town Road returns this Friday night. He had a hoof abscess last week and missed that race we just showed you, but I'm pretty sure he's as good as signed. Um, and then you say, well, who else would you sign? So Kango won't embarrass you in the race by Grins. He'll turn he up on his home last track. year, I think. Yep, yep, exactly. And he'll do a good job. And if he gets a better draw, because he got a bad draw last year, he can absolutely run a place. And Republican Party's another horse who could do that. I'm not sure they could win, but they could run placings in it. Um, but after that, Greg, it's it's pretty sparse. You know, mm. the, the horses we thought would be the like Millwood Nike are injured. Obviously, we've lost a cooter, and we're not going to go through the whole list again, yep. but there's lots of them. So very quickly, a horse like him who's a dependable, open-class horse. I'll be looking more for him than having a crack at something else. Um, the mm. other horse, which I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, the other horse who wouldn't be embarrassed is Mark Shard. Mm. Now, that sounds ridiculous. Well, a month because, ago, it would have really sounded ridiculous. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I'm into ridiculous stuff. <laughs> but he was good there. He mm. was excellent the start before. It's kind of crazy to think Barry and Scotty could have three in the race, but he was say, I think he's comparable horse to Kango at the moment. He just seems reinvigorated. Yep. So if you're choosing and say there's three or four spots, speak the truth, I would like to think we'll get one of them if Leap to Fame doesn't come. Kango, Mark Shard, and, and depending how Republican Party comes back, that's maybe more even a Franco Indy. Maybe. He, he goes around to Addington this week. He's, yeah, but, mate, yeah. look, he's going to need to prove it to me for sure because he's also mm. I just don't trust. But he has been better this year. Yep. He went a whole year without winning a race. So I agree with you. There's some spots there and there's some horses needed. And at some stage you say to yourself, well, what suits my brand or my company's brand? Uh, and who's going to go out there and not make a fool of themselves? So it is an intriguing couple of weeks. It almost looked a bit of a, a done deal, a lot of the parts of this race. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be intriguing to see who steps up. But I wouldn't be stunned to see either the first or second or both out of that race at Cambridge on April the 12th. Yep, one horse that will be there. It's the Tab Trot. It's a brand new race. Is this horse, Call Me The Breeze. Tell me what you saw at Menangle on Saturday night because the punters have spoken here, Michael. I saw yesterday he was still about 450. I see he's into 320. And if he goes like this, that would be good money. Well, so much is going to depend if he gets the front, Greg. Like, he just bolted in here. Admittedly, three of the other favourites galloped. So he's actually not beating what I think are great horses. It was actually a trifecta for Trixton, mm. believe it or not. The Trixtons in New Zealand have been relatively underwhelming. But he's a good, strong, big, fast horse. I, I think he still has a few little mental frailties, speaking to Nathan Jack, who, who I think is a great partner for the horse. But if you put him at barrier two or three in the TAB trot, then he's going to be awfully hard to beat because Just Believe doesn't have that level of gate speed. Let's not forget there's only eight in the trot, so it's all across the front line. So gate speed's going to be crucial because the horse you want to back or you're assessing at the moment can't draw the second line. And Muscle Mountain has gate speed. Oscar Bonavina might have a bit more than we think. We're not going to get a chance to see it any time soon. And... Then we've got this horse and Just Believe. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. Here is Muscle Mountain. He returns at Addington this week off a 30-metre handicap. And Greg, look, he looks a happy horse here. He's obviously over the issues he had. I don't think this trial proves much, but what are you hearing from the Hope Camp? Yeah, he got home in 57-1, He beat Mighty Logan, who is a three-race winner, so you'd expect him to do that. Spoke to Greg and Nina last week, and they both suggested that he's a little bit fat, he's a little bit tubby. He's got the Fred Shaw in a couple of weeks, uh, which should top him off nicely, so he won't be in that flying uh, stakes the week before the tab trot. But they're, they're pretty happy with where he's at, so that's a good thing. Also spoke to Nathan Purden this morning, and he said Oscar's exactly where we need him. I said, so do you think he can win this week alongside Muscle Mountain off the 30? He said, yes. 
So that's very important. In terms of the market, just believe still a dollar seventy. Call me the breeze into three twenty. Muscle Mountain, Oscar Bonavina, both at five dollars, and RC Phoenix, who had a gallop in the Hammerhead, about thirteen dollars. So, looking forward to the nineteenth running of the Group Three Lamb and Haywood. We need to wrap up Manangle though, Michael. Here's the Derby and uh, Soho Spectre came from a wee way off them here for one of the good guys, Ricky Elshin, gets to the outside here, and really, it's not even in the clear yet. You see it in the uh, black and the orange there, gets to the middle of the track now and really hit the line strongly in the blue hat. Yeah, he did. Look, he's a very fast horse. He wasn't among the best two-year-olds last season on the record books, but he, he got back in a lot of races from bad barrier draws and ran on really well. Um, he's a good horse in a very even crop. I don't think there's too many stars here yet. Bay of Biscay was good. Former New Zealander Minos was OK in third, and clearly he's... Going to have a lot of fun in New South Wales for uh, Kerry Ann Turner and Robbie. Uh, we Walk by Faith was just dreadful. I mean, you said you spoke to Nathan Pernod. I can't believe how bad it went for the horse I thought it was. My bad. I tipped it. I thought it would be an absolute good thing two weeks ago. I think if he had turned up at his best, maybe he would have been Greg, but he didn't run past the horse. No, very disappointing. So uh, going back to the drawing board there, of course, he has uh, got the Nutrients race uh, to come while he's still over there. But uh, on that performance, he'll need to lift off that. Here's Manhattan. Here's the feel-good story of the night from a Kiwi perspective. Still owned in New Zealand, of course. Uh, she's rough. She's a rough-and-tumble type. She had to be here, Michael. Brave you, Kelly is fast, gets to her outside, and kicking strongly the uh, brick and bread. Uh, I'll have a bubbles, but uh, Manhattan was good, and she's got the ladyship in her sights. Yeah, she was super. Now, most importantly, it's a sub 150. Yep. So 149.6, I think it was in the end. And of course, she's uh, a half to the Oaks winner. So all of a sudden, you've got a really in vogue family with a sub 150 next to its name and probably a few more coming up. I think Jack Trainer, who now trains the horse, was surprised. I had a good talk to him in the stabling area and he said Brave View Kelly was his better chance. She was good. Oliver Bubbles was enormous sitting parked, but she, she's a little war horse Manhattan. She hasn't won actually that many races, Greg, because she's been in such strong races and raced such good mares. But maybe that big track and that speed racing at Menangle is going to suit her. So she's owned by some good, really enthusiastic fellas, and it's good to see Johnny Turner on track there. Um, holding the victory rug and, and hopefully they get another one in a couple of months time and the ladyship by the way has gone back that and the New South Wales Oaks have gone back to the start of May yep. they've sort of created two mini carnivals out of that but yeah really cool performance um, and you would, would, wouldn't be surprised if she finally gets that Group 1 Greg which she deserves because she's now becoming quite a valuable broodmare. Yeah, just got beaten in the Golden Girl at the Queensland Carnival and she'll go from the ladyship into that. So, uh, yeah, let's hope she is able to grab that. That was win number 11 for her. As we leave this carnival, Michael, I caught something sitting in the studio the other night. It was you getting ready, getting prepared. I know these horses take a long time, but here is the man they call the brand getting himself ready, checking himself out. <laughs> is this a normal sort of routine for you? you take, funny you should say that. <laughs> not, not, only, not only am I obviously very vain, Gregory, but I, I, do, I do take these things relatively seriously. I know you do. When you go to the industry, when you people picture on camera, you've got to say to yourself, I'm representing not just the stable hands who don't really care what you wear, but you're representing the owners and the breeders and the Ken Brickens who've had millions of dollars into the game. And that was on Sky Thoroughbred Central. Yeah, it was. So we wanted to appeal to a thoroughbred audience and try and explain things to them. I thought Sky did it really well. Um, it was great to be there. I don't, I don't get paid to go. That, that's, that's the truth. I don't get paid a cent to go to Menangle. I go there because it's the right thing to do for the industry. And I enjoy working with Ryan, just like I enjoy working with you. But yes, sometimes the um, the makeup goes on a bit too thick and the tie gets straightened a few too many times, Gregory. <laughs> but if you didn't have pride in your work, it's no, it, it's, it's no different. I enjoyed I, it. No uh, different I, to when I see, the, uh, I see the trainers and drivers at the track. Invariably, in my career, jockeys, trainers or drivers, the ones who take care of their performance they tend to take care of their horses in the same way. Yep, yep, uh, and that's, uh, that's a great trait to, to have. All right, you did know a little bit about this as we go to the break. Give us a quick synopsis of Fernley Cash's win and more importantly, the first winning drive for Christina Denifistova. I hope I've done her name. Justif uh, justified Look, there. Really great story. Justice. Cambridge Thursday night. Um, Christina is from the east of Russia. She then moved to Moscow where she worked in a, a harness racing stable and drove five winners from just over 100 drives. 
her and her partner moved out here because he's a builder and he wanted to work in New Zealand. So she got on the internet, found Derek Ball of all people, rang Derek and said, can I come talk to you about harness racing? Derek eventually said, well, the biggest stable in the north is Steve Telfer. Christina went to Steve Telfer and said, could I work with you? But she didn't have a work visa. So she said, I'll turn up and work for free. I'll volunteer. Steve Telfer said to me, that's the sort of enthusiasm which is really infectious. We love having her around the place. And that all percolated into this. This is Christina's first race drive in New Zealand, winning a $25,000 race, beating, if you don't mind, Morris McKendry and David Butcher. What a start, what a great story, my New Zealand story of the week. Christina, all the way from Moscow, winning at Cambridge. And here's music mistress, uh, Caduceus Club of Southland, Alabar Phillies Classic, uh, beating on debut Orletz, who was excellent in second, uh, but music mis mistress goes back to back, scratching of uh, captain's mistress. Made a little bit easier, but you can only win, and she just keeps on doing that. Congratulations to the connections. She's done that very easily. Another win for Stonewall and, of course, Tim Williams. That was the Northern Southland meeting last Saturday. Also last Saturday, pretty sad uh, news coming through about Bob Rochford. Yes, the king of Kaikoura, the man behind the Kaikoura Trotting Club, unfortunately passed away. Uh, gee, he's got so many friends in the industry. Uh, here he is doing what he did best for the club on the tractor, that cheesy grin. I used to suggest to him he looked like the Riddler Michael, uh, age 73. He trained a few winners actually, Bob, 22 winners. There he is with his great mate, A.G. Hurlihy and Harry Highpants, uh, Ken Hainsworth as well, and with those uh, glasses on at a recent wedding that he attended. But he's just one of the great industry participants, uh, Michael. Really sad to hear of his passing. He will be farewelled appropriately at the Kaikoura track on Saturday at 1.30. There'll be a big crowd there because he was extremely well-known in the Kaikoura region, uh, very much well-liked. He was so passionate about the game, but in particular about the Kaikoura Club. One quick funny story, Michael. Uh, the year Arden Rooney won the Cup, I think it was his second win in it, uh, was the 50th Kaikoura Cup. So they had that on the front of the race book and he was the president. The following year they had celebrating the 50th uh, Kaikoura Cup again. I said, Bob, what's going on here? It must be the 51st. He said, oh, nobody will know. Don't worry about it. And that's, uh, that's what Bob was like, mate. He's just a character. Yeah, great attitude. Really sorry to hear of Bob's passing and I know it was very sudden, so our condolences uh, to his family. I was thinking when you told me about it, I, I can't think of many people in my time in harness racing who have been more synonymous with the club. Yeah. Um, you know, club executives or bosses change from time to time, and we've had some wonderful ones. But yeah, maybe Kerry Wells at Cambridge was a name that for a long time, when you thought Cambridge, you thought of thought Wells. Of Kerry. And, yep. But it's impossible to think of Kaikoura without thinking about Bob Rochford. So very sorry to hear of his passing. And yeah, to his family, thank you for all the time you allowed Bob to give to the club to make it one of the iconic race meetings in New Zealand, Greg. But I know you were a lot closer to him than many people watching the show. So yes, I'm sure it's a sad time for you. And Kaikoura, for a lot of people, Greg, will be just that little bit less fun uh, for those meetings heading forward. Yeah, he's got a lot of great mates. Ivan Court, used to call him Spud and Onion, and Colin De Filippi, who drove so many winners there. They're terrific mates. Jimmy Curtin, the list goes on and on. And uh, Yep, he'll be uh, farewell. Actually, he had a horse called Funny Boy, just remember then. Uh, and won about two or three races for him. Ended up winning 40 races in Australia. And I said to him one day, what'd you get rid of that one for? And he said, oh, I was just making it for someone else. So that was Bob's attitude. Yep, uh, he'll certainly be missed and we'll farewell him on Saturday. Uh, Alexandra Park, what he would say to us is, just get on with it, would you? The race meetings have got to go, got to keep going. So uh, let's get to Alexandra Park Friday night, have a look at this horse going around. Because she's pretty good, Michael. She's bred to be good and she is. Her name is All You Need Is Me. She is good. 
This was her Alexandra Park debut last week. Um, nice drive by Carter, took luck out of play. She's going to need to be better this week because she's turned up in a belter of a Caduceus Club Ladyship Stakes. There's been two late payments made for this. Ruby Row and Coastal Babe have paid up late and they've taken the stake from 70 to 100, so it's a really good race and appropriate field for that race. She's drawn the best. Coastal Babe outside her, who has real gate speed. Ruby Row, who's been good in the South Island, and Duchess Megs, it's sort of, sort of squeezed into one on the second line, which I don't think's gonna be ideal. But after this crop, I thought was sort of semi-muddling, Greg. It's actually turned into a really good crop. A lot of horses have emerged, and I think this race into the Oaks next week are gonna be fantastic. I'm not sure the TRB's got this market right. They've got her 2.2-ish or 2.4. It was 2.80 into 2.20. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that's too short for me. Absolutely yep. too short, considering Coastal Babes outside of with gate speed and Duchess Megs, it's really, really good. Mm. And there's lots of depth to it. Uh, Akatea, they, these are good horses. So I think it's too short, but obviously she's out of a door me, so she's she's very good and she's trying to do it mum did. And the other news coming out of the ATC, Greg, which will, I'm sure, pan into our next video, is they have raised the stake for next week's Northern Derby, alongside Woodland Stud, the sponsors for the race. It's gone from 150 to 200. Mm. So it's no small deal. So well done to everybody involved, the sponsors and the club, for getting the Derby back up to something like what it needs to be. It used to be a lot more, but 150 wasn't enough. 200, Greg, a step in the right direction. Yep, absolutely it is. And these horses, uh, Cold Chisel, uh, who we saw winning this race, go head to head again. Chase of Dreams got barrier one, uh, seventy into $1.55. That's Natalie Rasmussen getting to the outside and uh, charging down the centre of the track. Mark Purden is back in Auckland, so he will be back aboard uh, and Cold Chisel got through. But I think it's definitely Chase a Dreams at race uh, to lose this week. Just back to Ruby Rowe and Flying Alley, who starts in an earlier race. Uh, she wasn't eligible for the Caduceus. Both of those fillies, Nathan Williamson said, are very tractable and they will handle the right-handed way of going. He's pretty hopeful of bold performances from them. But let's concentrate on these boys. Can you see Chase a Dream beaten this week? Not really. I think he'll lead, and I don't think there'll be an enormous amount of pressure because the races before derbies don't tend to contain a lot of pressure. Everybody's thinking about next week. This is a size stakes seat. So I think he'll lead and win. I think he might even go around to $1.35. But Cold Chisel, I don't think it's greatly inferior to him and can win the derby for sure. The interesting horse is Dreams Are Free. Um, he's coming up from the South Island for Nathan. He's obviously very good. It's a tough school, Greg, jumping in at this level really quickly into a derby. So he's got a chance to really embellish his reputation over the next couple of weeks. It's already pretty big, but over the time I've been going to Alexandra Park, very few horses have turned up without any experience there to beat this class of horse. So we're going to learn a lot more about him in the next two weeks. Yeah, and when I spoke to Nathan about him yesterday, he said he's still a work in progress, right-handed. He said he's getting there, but it's very, very difficult to take on this quality of three-year-old when you're just not quite as comfortable right-handed. So it'll be interesting to see what he does this week into next week. Good program, Addington Raceway on Friday night. Uh, the fields weren't quite out as we record this, but let's have a look at some of the charges uh, that you can. Here's Franco Indy, middle of the track. I mentioned him before, Michael. Um, he'll go around this week off 10 metres uh, in the tyre general handicap, and he'll be very competitive. I think Speaking to Nathan, he said he's, he's a more rounded horse. He's growing up a bit. I know he had a, he went missing there for a wee while. He'll need to this week, though, because he's got American me, Franco Merrick, back there off 10 metres with him, so he'll need to lift, and the Falcons off the front. So that's him. We move into Eurostyle, who sat parked in this race, worked to the front. Gee, it was an excellent performance, Michael. This is a, a mare, I think, that's going to end up in cup class, that's for sure. That's beating Mystic Max and... Uh, the hope runner there, which um, Midnight Dash, she's been a performer at the top level. Yeah, look, there's no doubt she's going to end up in open class. She's a really good horse, uh, competes well and still learning how to race these type of horses. So she might have a bit of fun when uh, Muscle Magic and uh, sorry, Muscle Mountain and, uh, and Oscar Bonavini get out of the way when they go up north. So yep, she, she's, she's a horse I, I have plenty of time for. Triple G's a good horse, Greg. Um, he, he's at one of those three-year-olds from last season you know is going to end up working his way to open class because I think 
about six or eight of last season's three-year-olds, headed by Merlin and Don't Stop Dreaming, will do that. Yep, they definitely will, and he's got gate speed, and he's drawn eight this week, but he drew eight in uh, this race and was very brave, I thought. That was in behind Dance Till Dawn, and Charlie Brown was fourth. He, he takes on a good race. It's just watermelon, sugar, hay bar, tander, uh, Celtic spirits, helium, built for glory. That's going to be a good race, race four. There's some excellent racing there at Addington to go alongside uh, Alexandra Park on Friday night. The next day, we need to have a look at a couple of uh, charges out of Wyndham. They've got some depth to them, these races. Here's Louis Gould at the trials, Michael. Uh, gets to the middle of the track. Uh, I, I thought was good enough. That's it in the uh, Ferguson colours there. Um, to be really hard hard to beat in this. Uh, still rocking. Uh, they're, they're really handy horses. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Um, and I reckon Louis Gould's going to take some beating. As will this horse, Pin Seeker, who's won, what, four or five now for Johnny Cox. And... Uh, it goes round in race number nine on Saturday, and uh, it's a pretty smart horse, this. Yeah, not often you look at Cromwell grass track form and, and say this will be good form heading forward, but nice big long striding horse. Did a really good job. Different type of horse to the, the first now three-year-old you showed us. He's a little rapid going type of a thing by Lord Forbes, but yeah, both nice horses down in the grade there. Hey, Greg, while we're doing this, um, the news has come out. So as we are recording this, we record this around... Uh, lunchtime on Tuesday today. The news has come out during the show that Leap to Fame is not coming to Cambridge. Oh. So since we started the show, he yep. is now back. The decision we were expecting, I've had that feeling 50-50, he's not coming. No. So Leap to Fame out, the market will dramatically reshape. Although Which is had... disappointing from that racer's point of view, but from November's racer's point of view, that almost secures him there. Yeah, well, they were pretty honest about it. Yep. And you can absolutely see what they're thinking. So... Uh, yeah, disappointing for Cambridge, of course. Opens up the race now and opens up the oh, pieces on the chest. The shuffling, the shuffling of the guards now. Well, wow. Exactly. Speak the truth, I think, will yep. come. Uh, a Kango type horse, all of a sudden people start saying, well, who's going to fill my slot? Um, I had the indication that Jason Grimson probably wasn't looking to come, but that maybe might that change, will change. Too. So, yes, with this news breaking throughout the day, because they, they were very honest about it. They said we're going to make a decision around lunchtime on Tuesday. That has so, happened. So, leap to fame out. The market was starting to to work that way. It started to percolate through the system that people started to think this might, they must happen. And, yeah, he'll get here. That's eventually. why you're the news hound, Bran. They bring no, us the well, news. There's, there's, there's no need to panic with it. He'll get here at some stage. I feel for David Branch and the club. In many yeah. ways, Greg, in many ways, it might actually be a more even and competitive race. It won't be a better race, I'm not going to say that. No. But it might be more competitive. Because had he drawn a two or three, he might have gone around a dollar twenty or a dollar thirty. Mm. So I would have preferred him to come. I respect the fact that he's not coming and I guess if you want to go see him, you can get on a plane and go to Queensland for the winter. Yep, you absolutely can do that. Uh, over the Alps, over the weekend, Sam Otley had a field day. Seven wins for her over the two days. Five at Reefton, though. Three of those for her boss, uh, Mark Jones. Um, terrific horsewoman, as we know. Our leading female driver of all time. Real moonshine, air I will. Rapid response, uh, raging white bait, and hell of a moment. So um, she just keeps on doing it, Michael, and um, does it with a smile on her face. Yeah, cl class act. Um, she'll be the first ever female, New Zealand female driver to get to 1,000. What will she be up to now, Greg? Is it close to 800? It's heading that way, Michael. Absolutely yeah. it is. And, so, and, uh, and you're right. She, she's just an infectiously nice, happy person. I'm not going to say woman because it's irrelevant whether she's a guy or a female. She uh, She's a great driver, full stop. And, yep, not an easy place to go and have that sort of day. But it's a funny thing, the coast circuit, Greg. It's one of those places where every coast circuit, somebody has one. Like a Ricky Mays had them in the past or a John Dunn. 30 years ago, Ian Cameron, I think, had three or four in a day there. It's one of those places where people go and they get on the right horses and they get them to the front of the field and they dominate. But... Yeah, a fiver, it takes them dominating. Yeah, absolutely it does. Uh, Boys Invasion won that sh uh, Seddon Shields competition too. I actually don't think he won over the nine races, but he started every single time. Muscle Bank won on the first day, but he got the job done there, and that was a $10,000 bonus uh, there too. As we go to our next break, uh, Jimmy Armour, he's been a grand performer for the Dunn team, Robert and uh, Jenna, and of course Johnny doing the steering. Here he was winning at Reefton on Sunday. Took him past 100000 too, win number eight in his career, Jimmy Armour. He is what the Country Cups are all about.
Jimmy Armour to the roar of the crowd. It'll be too good for Sheeta. In your home straight, in your box seat, uh, let's go and have a look at Sod's Law. He won on both days. This was career win number 13. He's won over 130,000. Uh, Jim and James get us. This is what the Coast Circuit's all about, Michael. Uh, he's been a terrific performer, but he keeps sliding up and down the scale, and therefore he's able to do these things. Driving in the Team Teal colours, that got wrapped up at the weekend. I think they've got uh, their fashion competition at Addington on Friday night to wrap up the Team Teal uh, promotion, but Karen Tomlinson's one of their uh, ambassadors, and uh, she continues to develop as a driver, and she got Sod's Law home again. Yep, well done to everybody involved with Team Teal. It's a great cause obviously and that the industry can put itself in front of the community is doing good is really important so well done to everybody involved there and yep horses like sods law greg we mentioned this on the show last week that's their job yep. they're race horses most people go to work most days and horses like that who are sound and happy race them get the money you can out of them give the owners a thrill that's maybe the new model for those horses and you mentioned michael house before for lots of michael's horses He's not scared to line them up. Those horses and those trainers are really crucial to keeping harness racing ticking over and giving it market share. Yep, they absolutely are, Michael. Uh, Brooke Fody got win number one, and with her own horse, she part owns Jordan Ann. Uh, here it was winning on a Saturday. Pretty special moment for her. Started out, Michael, working for Phil Williamson, uh, where she had a couple of horses. Uh, she was an eventer uh, down the road, spent a year there. Now with Matthew, now that he's based at Awamaru, and a big, big thrill for her getting win number one on a horse that she clearly adores, and yeah, a fantastic result for her. Isn't it great? If you can have a, a, a first win anywhere, imagine having it your own horse for people who have supported you. So. She looks pretty stoked. <laughs> yep, absolutely she does. <laughs> Good on you, Brooke. And yeah, they're, they're famous colours also to drive in your first one. Of course, the Dick Prendergast Simon Katz colours that won Inter Dominion all those years ago, way before Brooke was uh, probably considered <laughs> and her yep. harness racing career was about three decades uh, away from happening. Yeah, what a great horse Simon Katz uh, was. Of course, he won a Dominion. In fact, he won all three nights of the, the Cup Carnival, which was pretty hard to do. What about the competition? Uh, last week, the answer was Muscle Mountain. Well over 100 entries now trying to get the slot with uh, Entain, of course, to get to the Tab Trot and the Race by Grins. Here's the this week's question for you. Who drove It's Merlin, your name is Merlin, to win at Manangle on Saturday? Get your entries to us, boxeatnz at gmail.com. Next week's the last week, Michael. If you haven't entered, you need to. You're one entry per person per week. A number of people, Michael, have entered each and every week, uh, giving them a great chance. They get flights, accommodation and hosted by uh, the team at Cambridge. It's a magnificent prize uh, up to the value of $5,000 in case you're flying from who knows where. We've actually had a couple of international entries Michael so um, we'll have to come to some sort of arrangement there. Well maybe they can bring one mate. So maybe <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe they can fly Jetstar, <laughs> yeah. which means they may not get there. <laughs> quite, quite possibly. <laughs> but um, um, but it, it will be, it'll be a wonderful weekend. It is a wonderful racing town in Cambridge. It's a cool little place. It's fun. Uh, it'll be a fantastic weekend. So look, I'm looking forward to it. To be honest, does Leap to Fame not being there change the night for me? Not really. I mean, it's, it's half a party as well. Yes. And the trot was always going to be the highlight for me. Leap to Fame's a little bit like Lazarus and the fact that when he turned up, he would have completely dominated the race. It'll make the preview show more interesting because we'll have something to talk about. So, um, yeah, I would love him to be there, but would it deter me from going to Cambridge? Absolutely not. There's going to be a huge bunch of people there from Australia. There's going to be maybe even more now. Yep. <laughs> um, and I think Speak the Truth 
now I've dissected all that information over the last five minutes, I think he'll probably turn up good. I'd love to see Shannon Price there. She's bubbly, she's uh, infectious, she loves her horse, and uh, yeah, it'd be magnificent to have her here. So let's hope that does unfold. What about racing around New Zealand for you this week? We've previewed some of the meetings. Marawa 2 have the second of their two days, and they've got the Palmerston North Paces and Trotters Cups there for $20,000. Alexandra Park, very good programme. Caduceus Club 3 year old Phillies Ladyship Stakes, which is gone to 100,000 as Michael mentioned 557, Addington have actually got 11 races, so very good nominations there including the $40,000 Lamb and Haywood Trotters Classic, I think it's 442 the first out of Addington Wyndham Cup, we talked about some of those races there on Saturday looking forward to their what, 12 race programme 1145 and the Monocarara Stayers Cup is on on uh, Sunday to 11 races. We haven't previewed those because those fields just not quite out either. Michael, you've wrapped up the Miracle Mile Carnival. It rolls into Alexandra Park. The next couple of weeks going to be superb, including uh, the Derby, the City of Auckland free for all, and all of that sort of rolls in uh, to the week before the race by Grins, uh, where it's a Thursday night race meeting, the Flying Mile for both the Pacers and the Trotters leading into the Tab Trot and the race by Grins. It's all ahead of us, mate and there's so many different things uh, that could change between uh, now and certainly in the next couple of weeks. There is. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Derbies and Oaks races are really important. So just one quick one. Uh, well done to the TAB. The conditions of the race by Grinsmen, if you back leap to fame, you get your money back because uh, there was a refund if a horse didn't get a slot. Well, he didn't sign for a slot. He was at no stage a slot holder, Greg. So I would presume by those conditions, that's a total refund mm. on Leap to Fame. It, oh, it must be, because he didn't at any stage get a slot. And it doesn't say on the conditions whether that's their choice. Or well the spotted, Michael. Choice. So well done to the tab. That's an appropriate way to handle those type of things. Uh, yep, onwards and upwards we go. Friday night this week for Alexandra Park. And then, Greg, I'm going to take a couple of days off. Yep, you are. I'm sick of talking to you, and people are sick of listening to me. Mm. So let's just have a break. Matt from each Cross other. next week. <laughs> Matt Cross, exactly. Younger, better yep. looking. Mm. Uh, yep. Yeah, whatever. A lot of positives there. Good yeah, on you, Michael. Really. Appreciate your input this week. Uh, that's been your box seat for another week. I will see you in seven days' time. The box seat brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Harness Link for all your worldwide harness racing coverage. Brecken Farms, New Zealand Bloodstock Standard Bread, IRT, it's your horse and our passion, Garrard's Horse and Hound, Lincoln Farms, Renwick Farms, Harness Racing New Zealand, the clubs, Auckland, Cambridge, Addington and Ashburton, and the TAB.